take a look at question 19. In question 19, we're looking at how to generate functions and equations given a factor and a graph. Okay? Question 19 reads, which graph represents a polynomial function that contains x squared plus 2x plus 1 as a factor? Okay? That is not the function. We're given a polynomial that contains this as a factor. So this is just a factor. We're given a factor and not the entire polynomial function. So keep that in mind. All right. Okay. So if this is a factor, then what should the related function look like? That's the, that's, that's what we're trying to do here. So, uh, we have X squared plus two X plus one. Um, as a factor, so we can easily use the factors to determine the roots or x-intercepts of the related uh, quadratic function, okay? So what we're just going to do is basically set this to zero. We're going to find the zeros of this quadratic equation and it will tell us um, what the um, roots of the actual graph will look like, okay? All right, so to do this, we're going to factor this real quick. So let's solve this. If we factor this, we will have, what will we have? Um, AC, we're going to use the AC method here, okay? So AC is just 1 and then B is 2. So you ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to give you 1 and add to give you 2? The answer is 1 and 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Now, in this particular problem, a is equal to 1. The leading coefficient is 1. So, in this particular case, we can skip the grouping process. We do not have to do any grouping. We can jump right to the factored state. That is simply going to be x plus 1, since we have a plus 1 here, and another x plus 1. Okay, equals 0. And what we'll do is set it equal to 0, so x plus 1 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. If you solve both of them, you're going to have x equals to negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2. This, ladies and gentlemen, is known as a double root. Whenever you have a double root, visually, it just tells you that a vertex will be touching the x-axis at that particular value. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. In option one, we have a double root right here because the vertex is touching the x-axis right there. In option number two, we also have a double root right here. Okay, so you can narrow down your options just based on that. Okay, so now that we know what double roots are, let's look at the graphs and see which one has a double root of negative 1. We're going to go at this, at this blindly, okay? We're going to assume as though we don't know what this information is. So let's take a look at question 1. We have a double root here and we have another root here. Let me change my color real quick. We have a double root here and we have another root here. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the root of this polynomial function is x equals negative 1. Because it's a double root, it is going to have a multiplicity of 2. And the other root is x equals 2. Okay? So do we have a match already? Absolutely. Look at this. Right here, we have x equals negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2 as part of the solution. And we already have it manifesting itself here. So that automatically tells us that um, the correct answer is option 1. All right. But let me show you what this um, looks like in, as a uh, function or um, as, as an equation. So the related equation is going to be as follows. Um, if you have x equals negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2, that's simply going to be, um, you're going to have x plus 1 times x plus 1. Or you can write x plus 1 squared or x plus 1 times x plus 1. Okay. And then we have x equals 2 as another root. So that's going to be x minus 2 equals 0. 
So what we're doing is we're unsolving, all right? So if you look at this right here, this is the factored form, um, and we see that x plus 1 times x plus 1, which are factors of this expression, shows up here. So this piece right here is x squared plus 2x plus 1, all right? This is a factor um, of the original polynomial function. Now let's take a look at option 3. We're going to break that down also. All right, so for option 3, we're going to guesstimate a little bit, okay, because all the roots are not um, on lattice points. So we have one root here, which is negative 1. Perfect. And this one, let's just say it's in the center, okay, negative 1 half. And then this one is right between 1 and 2, so this one is uh, 1 and a half or 3 halves. So uh, this graph tells me that the roots are x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1 half, and then x equals 3 over 2. All right, so what are the related um, factors that generate these roots? We're going to unsolve this equation. So for the first one, we just add 1 to both sides, x plus 1, that equal to 0, and then this one you multiply by 2 and add 1, so x plus 1 equals 0. And in this one, you multiply by 2 and add, uh, subtract 3, 2x minus 3. So when you solve these three equations, you're going to end up with these three roots, okay? And then all we just do is multiply them by each other. And that will give us the polynomial function with this graph right here. So it's going to be x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. And we see why this is not the answer because we do not have any x plus 1 repeated in the complete factorization um, of this graph function. Okay? Alright, now let's move on to question uh, option 2 and see what that looks like. For option 2, ladies and gentlemen, we have a double root again. Okay? So we have a double root here at 0. There's, that's a double root. How do we know that it's a double root? Well, because we have a vertex touching the x-axis right there. Okay? So we have negative 1, we have double root at 0, and then 1, 2, 2. Alright? So what do the roots look like? For option 2, the roots are going to be x equals negative 1, x equals 0. This one is will have a multiplicity of 2, multiplicity of 2, and then the other one will be x equals 2, all right? So in fact, that form is going to be, so add 1 to both sides, it's going to be x plus 1, and then this has, uh, is already x equals 0, is already solved, but we're going to have it with a multiplicity of 2, so that's going to be x times x, and then the last one is just minus 2 from both sides, and you will have x minus 2. Do you see why this is not the answer? We see that this is not the answer because x plus 1 does not show its show up twice in the complete factorization of the equation with this graph right here. Okay? Okay, let's take a look at option 4 and see why that is not the answer. So, this is uh, negative 1, 0, and 1. We have three roots here. So, the roots are x equals negative 1 x equals 0 and x equals 1. There are no double roots here. So the related factor form is going to be x plus 1 times x times x, this one you minus 1 from both sides, equals 0. Alright? And we can clearly see that this is not the answer also because x plus 1 does not show up twice. Correct answer for question number 19 is option number one. So cancel three, two, and four. All right, so question for you to think about. which? Why do you think it's important to be able to find the roots both graphically and algebraically? So graphically and algebraically, why do you think it's important to be able to find the roots using both methods? Let us know what you think. Just put your answer in the comment section below. Tell us um, why you think it's important to, to know both methods, and then we'll see what you think.